So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hi, villains, and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast. This is going to be a shorter little transfer room or video. And the reason for this is uh, it's a player that while I know of him, I've seen very little of him, if that makes sense. And and the reason that I know of him is that uh, I've seen him be linked previously with Liverpool, Man City. Um, there's There's been some... Some some big big clubs, Barcelona as well have been have been in for him, and um the player himself is uh is <clears throat> how will I put this? He's a, a self confessed uh, Barcelona fan, which is something that we will uh, we will talk about in a moment. Um, but uh, the player indeed is Alberto Moliero uh, of Las Palmas. Um, link came down today via Mail Sport that Aston Villa were interested in him. I think a lot of teams in Europe are going to be interested in him. Um, uh, he's not a secret. It's just I've not seen an awful lot of him. It uh, bears a lot of comparisons to, to some big heavy hitter names, uh, which we will look at in a moment as well. Um, what I want to say to you guys as well is before... Uh, just before we end this podcast, um, there will be a subsequent tweet that I will link in the description here. This tweet will have some video footage of um, of this player, just so you guys can take a look at it. It's something I'm going to start integrating uh, into these. Um, obviously, I don't want to share them on YouTube because I don't have the copyright for for the um, the actual footage itself. Um, but I will share a small bit of a footage snippet with you guys of one or two goals that he has scored in the tweet that will be below. So if you when you finish this, you'll be able to look at that tweet. And uh, it should uh, enlighten us more a little bit about this player. So um, let me just share my screen, if you guys don't mind. I will take a little look at uh, Alberto Moliero. So um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, he is uh, 19 years of age, a Spanish under-21 international. Uh, it's rumored that he has a release clause of 26 million pounds or 30 million euros. They're the two numbers that I found on him. Um, he's playing at Las Palmas, La Liga 2 team at the moment. Um, if they get promoted, apparently that release clause goes up. I've heard any, any varying degrees that it goes up to 60 million. I've heard 40 million. I'm not quite sure, but apparently that release clause does uh, increase if he is if they are promoted. Um, also, just trawling around, it seems that Barcelona bid for this person in the offseason, uh, didn't sign him. Um, when he's got a release clause of 26 million, obviously that will be activated. And I think that Aston Villa could stretch to 26 million. Whether other big fish out there want to go and sign him for that, that that price point and maybe let him grow within their team and maybe if they've got financial acumen to be able to do that, to spend 26 million on a player and maybe not see him for the next six months and utilize him next year, uh, potentially that could be something that could happen. Um, like I'm not overly optimistic that Aston Villa will sign this player just based on some of the things that I've read, based on where he wants to go and some comments that this player has had about his love for Barcelona. Barcelona, which we will see in a moment's time. So, pay, um, Alberto Moliero, he's been likened to uh, he's been likened to to quite a lot of players. Uh, Pedri is one of them. Obviously, playing at Las Palmas previously as well, and being from the Canary Islands, Pedri is one player he's been likened to. He's been likened to um, uh, he's been likened to Andres Iniesta also. Uh, due to his tenacity, his ability to drift out wide, to utilize the space and the space in the flanks, but also his ability to be able to play through the center as well is one of the reasons uh, that he has been likened to, to Iniesta. When you look at Moliero play, you're going to see him there. Seven or five, seven foot five, five foot seven. Um, he's a diminutive player, but when he tugs out in the field, he doesn't look very, very small. That's one thing that I found when I saw him. Um, now, like he's not, he, he's he's. He's got a decent stature on the field for somebody who's five foot seven. He's got a low center of gravity, and you can see that in his ability to dribble and carry the ball. You can also see that helps him as well in the tackle because while he's not the, the most stout player, um, he gets physical. He's not afraid to, to throw tackles in there. Now, those tackles aren't particularly successful, um, but he's not afraid to like bounce off players, and when players bounce off him, he can keep his balance as well. So that's something that I like to see from him too, just like... As I say, that's really, for me, was what would invoke thoughts of Iniesta. I, I haven't seen enough of him to be able to make any wild claims like that. This is just stuff I've read online with regards to, to why people think he's like that. Um, he's only just, uh, he's he's 
turned 19 in September, just gone. A very, very confident player. Um, oh, been a player, been a first team player for Las Palmas for the last two years. Scored his first goal against Abida uh, in September 2021. Um, he scored his first goal. As we can see there, he scored three goals in all, had six assists. The positions that he's played have been left central midfield. He's played there 12 times. Left wing and left wide midfielder, he's played there 35 times. And as a right midfielder, he's played there eight times. The reason I don't have the, de the depth of statistics that I normally have on, on players is it's actually quite difficult to get statistics for the Spanish Secunda division, to be honest with you. So I've just taken a spattering of them that I could find here. With regards to tackles per 90, he, he averages 1.1 uh, tackle per game. Uh, possessions won at 0 0.4. Blocks at 1.31. Interceptions 0 0.29. And fouls committed 1.03. So defensively, we're not going to be relying on this guy. Uh, but his passing uh, accuracy, his accurate passes per, set, per 90 minutes, equates 17.5. That equates to 85.6% accurate passes, 0 0.6 key passes per game, and his dribbles completed and his successful dribbles are quite high as well. Obviously, because of his diminutive nature, five foot seven, he's not going to win a lot of aerial battles, and that's reflected in the fact that he only wins 9% of his aerial battles uh, as well. Um, so uh, looking at his career stats, as I say, he's played 55 games, 36 starts equating to 3,128 minutes, and he averages 50, he's averaged 55 minutes per game over the course of his career, scoring three goals and six assists, as I mentioned previously. Looking at his at his heat map there to the left-hand side, you can see he is left-side dominant, more so playing in that wide left midfielder as opposed to a left wing position. And, uh, you know, when we look at Unai Emery playing a 4-2-2-2, that would actually suit where we would want him to line up. Um, if that if that was one of the reasons that we were looking at bringing him in, Unai Emery has been quoted today as saying a winger is something that we drastically need, and we're going to be pushing hard to sign a winger. So maybe this is the ilk of player that Unai Emery has in mind. Obviously, Unai Emery hasn't managed at Las Palmas, but he does have uh, connections within the Spanish game. He's well known within the Spanish game. He's revered within the Spanish game for what he's done. Maybe he has some pull from that point of view to be able to sign a player who's highly thought of and I'm reliably informed as a wonder kid and, for, and football manager. I haven't played in a couple of years, uh, but I'm widely, widely informed that he's a wonder kid and football manager. Maybe Unai Emery has that kind of pull to be able to sign this player. Um. Also, just uh, want to want, want to take a little look in a moment. We'll show it up here. So, Goal.com, I found a very interesting article on Goal.com from October 28, 2022. Uh, and they likened him to that. They, they have a nice little passage here, which I thought was was quite quite nice. It says, from David Silva to Pedri, Pedro to Jeremy Pina, who's somebody else that we've been linked with. Pino, should I say. Somebody we've been very, else we've been linked with and obviously knows Unai Emery very well. The Canary Islands have become a hotbed of footballing talent in recent years with a number of Spain's most te technically gifted footballers hailing from the likes of Tenerife and Gran Canaria and have been brought up playing street football. Um, interesting that they mentioned that because that is something that you'll often hear. Specifically, I suppose, the old school scouts, um, they they did, that's a big detraction for them. They hate the fact that football has become very structured. The grassroots nature of football has become very structured and almost um, league structure competitive as opposed to that, um, how will I put it, that spontaneous nature of street football. So uh, it's, it's kind of nice to hear that from uh, to, to him is described as that, as a street footballer, because as we know, um, having a winger that has that little bit of... Uh, a little bit of pizzazz about him. You know, a lot of players are made on the streets like that when they do play football. So um, it's interesting that he has been uh, equated, that he's been equated to being that type of footballer. Uh, Goal.com also say, watching Merliero can, all, can sometimes feel like you're watching two different players, such as his almost unique skill set. He possesses the close control and press resistant awareness of space, awareness of space of a modern day midfielder, while also having the electric pace and dribbling ability of a natural winger. I think that's really where the Andreas and Iniesta comparisons come from. The press-resistant awareness of space. Iniesta was the master of that when he played. And we all know how he'd like to come in centrally and move the ball out wide, get into his own area of space, and then turn on the afterburners. So um, that might be where the, the comparisons are coming from, that kind of uh, similarity in his play style as, as well. So um, Goal.com also go on to say, and we should see it there now in a moment, that Moliero could improve that aspect, the aspect of his game, which is passing, particularly in build-up play, when sometimes his energetic style can get the better of him. 
The fast-paced way of playing can also mean he finds himself out of position at times as he can regularly be found chasing the ball when out of possession, leading to him leaving space behind. And there are only physical, there are also physical tra- things to work on, but right now they are less concerning given his age. Uh, I presume that means that he needs to put a bit of meat in the bones. Uh, to be able to, to to be able to continue to take tackles like he does, but uh, all in all, I think uh, any of these uh, areas of opportunity wouldn't be out of the realms uh, of of expectancy for a young player like this, and specifically a player that would play in the position that he plays in as well. Um, so I want to bring your attention as well to some things that the player has said himself uh, with regards to his own future. Um, Alberto Moliero on Barcelona rumors. My agent told me that an offer existed. I was happy, but nothing official was done. I grew up watching Barca, and the club wanted me to come. And the, the club wanted me to come made me happy. Pedri asked me if I was coming, so obviously he knows Pedri from his time at Las Palmas. He he's courting Barcelona quite a lot in some of his in his tweets and interviews, and we can see down here as well that he's quoted as saying that Las Palmas have given me the number ten jersey in my first season as a senior player, and my focus is here. Barca interest. It's always been a dream for me to play for Barca because I've been a cooler since I was a little kid and it's the team I support. So look, essentially, he's if Barca come in for him, he will find it very difficult to turn him down. Obviously, Barcelona have that kind of young midfield player revolution going on with the likes of Gavi, Nico, um, Pedri, all in there, and Sufati, all in that team at the moment. And uh, they, they've made some good like they've they've really kind of revitalized and revamped that team uh, bringing in young players uh, over the course of the last two to three years that have gone under the radar and some that have have always been destined for success like the likes of Pedri and Gavi as well and will Alberto Moliero be one of those ones that goes to Barcelona he certainly wouldn't mind it and that's why I think it's going to be very difficult for Aston Villa to sign this player so Everybody, as I say, this is one of those ones that kind of came out of nowhere. I will have further a, a further little, um, uh, video clip of some of his uh, of, of some of his uh, passes, some of his goals, some of his uh, his involvements uh, coming up as well. If you can, cl- if you want to click on the Twitter um, the Twitter link in this description as well. Also, if you don't follow our YouTube channel here, please give this a thumbs up. Also, click on subscribe. We do these transfer window pieces quite regularly. Uh, it's my favorite time of the year. I try and get them out as much as I can as we are linked with players. So that's Alberto Moliero. Aston Villa, rumored to be linked with him, rumored to be a fan, a favorite of Una Emery, Emery, and he is well known around Europe. Whether he comes to Aston Villa or not, I'm very much on the fence, and I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to stake my reputation on it, given that there are some bigger sharks fish uh, swimming around in the ocean with regards to him at this moment in time. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and all that's left to say is up the villa. Mm-hmm.